Hey there, friends and fellow nature journalers. I am Marley Pfeiffer, and this is the Nature Journal Show. And tonight, I have a special bonus episode for all of you. So for all of you that already know about the Nature Journal Show, you might not have expected this because usually the Nature Journal Show comes out on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time and sometimes on Sunday afternoons. Actually, pretty much every Sunday afternoon these days. But tonight, I'm doing a special episode because I want to just share some of what the Nature Journal show is about with you, share some of my recent pages. I might even have time to do a flip through of this Nature Journal right here. Look, I haven't filled the index yet. Shh, I started a new Nature Journal without finishing the last one. I also have some cool stuff here that I could do nature journaling live with, some products that I want to review, follow-up review because I've already reviewed these, and a couple other things that I want to talk about, including the fact that my Patreon, which is one of the main ways that this show is supported, is going to be having a special limited time offer that is going to be ending on May 5th. So if you want to show your support for the Nature Journal show and help me continue to make episodes like this where I talk about nature journaling techniques, take you along for nature journaling adventures, uh, I do interviews of other nature journalers, science illustrators, artists, and all kinds of people, and I do product reviews that help you save money. All of those things are made possible by my Patreons who support me through as little as $1 a month. So until the 5th of this month, you can sign up for a whole year of supporting my channel and you get special access when you do that. So this is going to be uh, only a few more days before um, that special offer is over. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight and I had some time and I had some materials here and some stuff already to Nature Journal. So I decided why don't I just do a live show right now. So I'm going to jump right into it but every once in a while I will be mentioning the fact that um, there is that special offer going on. So I'm going to just post right now the link. Um, to my Patreon website and really on there, you can just support the channel for as little as $1 a month. So if you sign up before May 5th, that comes out to like $10 for a whole year. And when you do that, you get access to, oh my gosh, look at this orchid flower is bouncing all over. When you do that, you get access to the patron only parties and other um, little previews and stuff like that. And just the knowledge and the pride that you're supporting the nature journaling community through the nature journal show. So I am going to go ahead and switch to my document camera right now and do a little bit of quick sketching for you. And maybe if you've been watching my interviews recently, you've seen that I've been incorporating this into more of my interviews because it's such a fun way to um, sort of break the ice. And I'll share a couple pages that I've done quickly and then I'm gonna do a little bit of a nature journaling technique that maybe you could try at home. It's a little bit messy, but it's pretty fun, so you might like it. So I'm gonna switch over here to my document camera and um, first, let me just show you, I also, in addition to doing the nature journal show, which takes uh, quite a bit of time, I do teach nature journaling um, in person and that has definitely been affected by COVID uh, but I still have been doing some outside sessions in a safe, COVID safe way, including teaching kids. So here's an example from a recent class that I did with um, two kids that I teach every week. Their uh, mom has them signed up for a two hour session every week. And we did a collection. So you've probably already, if you follow my channel, you've probably already seen that I did a video recently about how to do a nature journal collection. It's one of the basic nature journaling techniques that you should know about. And it's, it's really great when you're looking at a bunch of things that are similar. So a collection would be, for example, in this one case, wildflowers. And you can see here that I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven different wildflowers in my collection. And this was sort of a competition with these other kids. But what I want to show you right now is this other technique. And here is an example. I have this uh, towel here, paper towel here to keep it from smudging. 
But this is the technique I'm going to do a little bit with you right now. And you might be wondering why I'm wearing a black shirt. Well, this is precisely why I'm wearing a black shirt. And I think I have the episode of the Nature Journal show coming up pretty soon about this. But I'm going to show you right now that this was actually drawn. This tree, this charismatic old tree, was drawn using branches from this very same tree. And uh, one of the things that you should know about the Nature Journal show is that I asked the audience and the people who um, chime in first are the people who are members on Patreon. But my entire audience has, a, has an impact on what I make the show about. So in this case, people said they wanted to see more episodes of the Nature Journal show about how to Nature Journal charismatic old trees. And so that's what I did. I made a video recently. I, I mean, I made the footage recently and still have to edit the video. Wait, where's the other one? And that is a com that, that video is coming up soon. Here you can see another version of it. And yes, this was drawn with ink, um, black ink, using twigs, using twigs from this very same tree dipped into ink. So that is what I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. And I'm going to um, draw, I have this orchid right here um, that's re-blooming. Yes, I love orchids. I hope you do too. They're an essential part of a balanced lifestyle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same technique and I have these olive branches that I just ran out and grab for my garden that I'm going to turn into my drawing tools. So this is kind of funny because I do oftentimes on the Nature Journal show recommend things that I think you could use for your nature journaling, like different things that you can buy on Amazon or buy at the art store. But this is one of those things that is so simple. You could just pick these twigs in your backyard and turn them into drawing tools. And I must give credit to Lori Wiggum. She is, I had heard of this concept before, but she's definitely the one that has really inspired me. And I've seen her teach this multiple times um, when we've worked together, nature journaling in burn areas, areas that have recently burned. And she she has really, you know, shown me that that even a stick dipped into ink can be a, an amazing drawing tool. And if you ever work with kids, this is really fun. Or if you're the kind of person um, like myself, I must admit, who gets sort of like uptight about drawing and you often rely on, for example, mechanical pencils um, or really sharp pencils and you like very precise lines and you often erase them, then this is a really good technique for you because this technique really helps with mark making. So if you haven't studied art in school, where is my knife? I'm going to need a knife for this. If you haven't studied art in school, then this might be a concept that's slightly foreign to you, but there's this idea of mark making. And so when you see some art, uh, an artist can be very precise and capture things in um, an amazing way. And that's great. And some artists um, focus a little bit more on the mark making. So for example, Van Gogh would be an example. Even though he's a painter, one of the main things that you notice in his paintings is you can see the individual brush marks. It's not like a photorealistic painting. And it's actually the 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 character um, that, that it provides character. Those brush marks provide character. And so it's almost like when you have a little bit less control, it actually can help in this department. And if you've heard of people saying like, oh, you should hold your pencil or you should hold your brush this certain way, that has to do with mark making. And so um, sort of that fluidity or a little bit of randomness mixed in is really what um, mark making is all about. And when you use a tool that you have less control over, like compared to using a, um, a pin, like a technical pin or a micron, a dipped p twig dipped into ink, into a whole jar of ink is going to give you less control. And for those of us who really like control, yes, you know who you are, raise your hands. Um, this can be a really good practice because it's going to push your comfort edge and it's going to help you in other aspects of your nature journaling, incorporate a little bit more of a fluidity into your mark making. So I'm going to sharpen these sticks just a little bit um, with a, a, an X-Acto knife, and then they're going to be ready to draw. 
Um, in the meantime, I'm noticing that Ivea is here and Aneta from Nature Sketches are both here. Thank you so much. Both of them are already patrons on Patreon, so they already know all of this stuff about um, the Nature Journal show and how you can support it. So thank you so much. Both of them are already supporting the show. So if you're doing this with kids, you can use a potato peeler, and I would recommend getting sticks that are slightly fatter than this. Um, this is just what I had really close to my office. Um, so I'm going to aim for sort of like a chisel tip. That will give you some more variation in the shape of the tip. Um, you don't want these, um, this, this is pretty good right here. I don't think my camera will focus on it very well, but you can see that from this side, it's very sharp. Um, and then from this side, it's a little bit wider. What you don't want so much are these weird, like, see these like hanging things like that. Um, you don't want that because that'll be a little bit, it's good to have a little bit of lack of control, but you don't want to um, give away uh, all of control of your mark making. So um, if you didn't take art classes in school, mark making is like one of those vocabulary terms that you hear people using sort of like texture, or tone or whatever. Um, mark making, when people, when you hear that or you read that, what they mean is sort of this, um, it's subjective, like many terms in art and art um, history and art criticism. Um, it's, it's very subjective, but mark making is basically just sort of like the character of um, the drawing or the painting and what those marks look like. And one of the main ways that you as an artist or a nature journaler can um, play around with that is by changing your tools or changing how you hold your tools. So if you're using, for example, only micron pins, this tool is not really going to make it easy, especially if you're a very precise person. This tool is not going to make it easy for you to have some kind of like interesting um, mark making. Uh, if you're very free with it, perhaps. But if you're using a tool, this is sort of moving on the spectrum. I like to talk about things on a spectrum because things are not usually in black and white in nature or in art. So um, moving a little bit along on the spectrum, oh, actually, let me start with this one. Moving a little bit along on the spectrum of mark making, a tool that would be a little bit more, give you a little bit more variation would be like a brush pin. So this is that um, Furuyaku, um, pilot brush pin. It's not an actual brush like with bristles, but it simulates a brush. And this can give you some, um, can give you some mark making. So I'm going to show you some examples here. Um, this, the, these spiders right here were drawn with this brush pin and the mark making is not that interesting. It's almost like just straight lines. This is also, this gray is also with that same brush pin because it has two colors. The mark making's a little bit more interesting. Um, here, I would say this is even more interesting, like a little just bit more variation. So like I said originally um, in this conversation, that if you look at someone like uh, Vincent Van Gogh, he's painting with oils, but mark making is really at the foundation. You can see every, you can see the brush strokes um, and you can see those marks. Uh, another example, more like on the ink side, would be someone like, um, there is the Italian uh, Renaissance artist, Tiepolo. And if you look at his ink drawings, you can see like, oh, these the marks or like the cross hatching makes it interesting because um, it's not about a photograph. So this tool is um, in, in precision, it's, it's less precise then, um, you know, like this micron pin and it gives you a little bit more line variation. Um, line variation is another art vocabulary term. So this will give, help you with your mark making. And then, um, next up, I would say is like this Fude de Manin. So this is a fountain pin that allows for a lot of variation in mark making. Um, it's not, you're not really sacrificing that much control, maybe a little bit of control. If you're a real, um, real control freak in your drawing, 
this might not appeal to you, but sometimes that means exactly that you need to push into that area. Charcoal, drawing with charcoal would be another example of something that's all about the mark making. Um, and what we're about to do right now is even more like that. So um, we're going to jump right into it. I've been doing experiments with this a lot lately. I'll show you that tree one more time. Um, here's actually an iris that I drew with that, um, that fountain pen that I just showed you. And you can see the mark making is an important part of both of, both of these drawings. This is a flowering, um, like a broccoli, a kale plant. And this is an iris, um, iris family plant. And you can see, if you look at it, you can see there's a lot of line variation. The line thickness changes. I don't have total control of the drawing tool. Um, the line changes quite a bit. And that is what I'm talking about when I, I mean mark making. Whereas a drawing like this, this drawing is not about mark making. This is a diagram. See how the line is basically the same everywhere. It's an outline. It captures the idea of that flower, the idea of that plant. But these drawings are not about mark making at all, whereas these ones are. So I'm gonna check over here in the comments. I see that um, there's some interesting comments, so I just want to look at those briefly. Um, I think it's really funny that Yvea is reminded of Mark Simmons when it comes to mark making. Yes, terminology, This is, I'm gonna share this um, comment here. If you have any questions or comments, um, post them over there and I will I will tackle them. That's one of the benefits of a live show. Um, and yes, Ivea is totally on point here because having vocabulary, um, even if it's made up vocabulary, can be really helpful because it helps you think about things on a higher level when you are able to describe them with words. So there's certain aspects of your nature journaling, of your art making that you might not have the terms for and it's great that so many of us have not studied art professionally um, some of us have studied science professionally um, some of us have studied art professionally people come to nature journaling from so many different places and that's really really useful um, and it is also really useful to have vocabulary for some of these things so we have vocabulary for nature journaling specific things and it's really good to draw on vocabulary from the arts like this this term mark making is useful because even in nature journaling it's important to kind of be able to categorize and understand what's going on when we look at a page because a lot of times what we do is we see someone else's page on um the uh we see someone else's page on the nature journal club facebook page and we say oh wow that's really uh, i really like that that's beautiful but we don't really know what's going on in in that drawing that we like so mark making is an example of that so i'm going to get into it um just one more example of something that's not very focused on mark making this is how i usually nature journal and i showed this page a little bit earlier this is using that uh Fudayaku um, double-sided pin, the pilot pin that I really like, and I've, I've reviewed this multiple times on the Nature Journal show, and then using my John Muir Law's watercolor palette. And you can see this is what some people might um, sort of critically call a um, coloring book style. So I pretty much just drew with ink, black ink. I drew an outline. I drew a sort of cross-section diagram of this poppy, and then I put the color in. And yes, I did have variation in the color there. You know, there's not a lot black line around it, but some people would call this sort of coloring book watercolor. And this is what I usually do. This type of drawing is not about mark making. It's more about diagramming and sort of just capturing um, the important information in more of like a scientific way. So what's really important is um, to kind of reflect on your own process and this is where metacognition comes into nature journaling reflect on your own process and sometimes it's good to push yourself into these other areas that you're not used to so if all of your nature journal pages look like a diagram then maybe it's time to experiment more with mark making and one of the great ways to do that and sort of loosen yourself up a little bit um, if you feel like sometimes you're kind of 
a perfectionist in your drawing or you're sort of hesitating in your drawing, then this technique is perfect for you. And um, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna find these sticks and it also shows you Oh, that's the other thing. This nature journaling technique is the antidote for those of you who really like buying art supplies. Okay, I admit it, I admit it, I love buying art supplies. I've gone through phases where I buy tons of art supplies. You know, as soon after I interviewed um, Maria Ermolova, I bought this. You know, I, uh, I, I buy lots of art supplies. Sure, it's, it's true, I admit it. Uh, you know, I, I bought this ink so that I could put it into my fountain pen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've tried lots of things. But this technique that I'm gonna show you right now really helps em emphasize the fact that you don't need high-tech stuff to nature journal. Like really, you could do it with a bottle of ink and a twig that you find. And this twig could come from the very same tree that you're drawing. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna make a helicopter. No, just kidding. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up my document camera, I'm gonna be looking at this flower, and I'm gonna show you how I use this twig from an olive tree in my backyard to do some nature journal sketching. And this is sort of like a warm up. Think of it as like a calisthenic. It's the kind of thing, especially if you're more of an uptight nature journaler, uptight artist, you're very um, detail oriented. This is the type of practice that could help you um, loosen up a little bit. And ink, there's no going back with ink. That's why I'm wearing a black shirt. So I'm gonna switch to the document camera. For those of you who don't know, to, uh, there's only like a few more days before you can sign up on my Patreon for the annual membership. So check it out. I think half the people or more who are watching right now are already patrons. So that is awesome. I'm preaching to the choir, but for the rest of you, uh, check it out. It's a great way to support the Nature Journal show to be proud of your role in uh, spreading nature journal education. And it's less, it's like less than $10 a year at the lowest. And um, you also get access to patron only parties and some other things. So let's see, maybe I can do this in a way where I won't ruin this beautiful page over here with my ink dripping everywhere. I've already had one ink accident today because I was teaching this very same technique to some kids and then I, I, it was, I'm not gonna blame on the kids, I didn't close this ink container all the way before I put it in my backpack. That's another thing I wanna point out, check this out. I got this, this, I got this ink for 329 and how many milliliters is this? This is like almost a pint. No, just kidding, a pint is an ice cream. No, that's, it's not a pint, but this is a lot of ink um, for 329 compared to even like one of these pins. Yes, I love these pins um, Luckily, they don't sponsor me so I can say these things But this pin is like four bucks or something this pin costs more than this whole thing of ink And just think of how much drawing you can get done with this thing of ink and a twig this twig was free by the way, so um, now I'm gonna just go for it. So um, Let me maybe I'll put down one more thing um, also, I want to mention that the Nature Journal show also features lots of chocolate. So if you have your chocolate ready, go ahead and get it out and eat some because chocolate is really good for your brain. And if you're not, if you're nature journaling without chocolate, then you're really missing out. This is an essential art supply in my opinion. It's good for your brain. They're doing lots of new research that shows that chocolate is actually healthy. I can't believe that there was a period in American history where we thought that chocolate was not healthy. That's just crazy. Let me get this light on this orchid a little bit and go. Oh. Sounds like Ivea does not have chocolate at her house right now. That is very sad. So I'm gonna start with this one. I like this one because it still has some leaves on the top. That is not necessary. This is just Sumi ink. So this is Chinese calligraphy ink. It's, even though I think it's made by a Japanese company, I think Sumi ink is originally a Chinese thing, but history and um, 
cultural, political geography is complicated. So a lot of stuff around calligraphy and art from China went to Japan and influenced Japan. So I think technically Sumi Inc. is a Chinese thing, but the particular this particular company is Japanese. Um, this one is not water soluble. So I'm just gonna un carefully unscrew this cap here. So this is what I would call sort of a, um, if you're kind of like I am and you like things being wow, you can see it sort of splashing around in there, or is that a bubble? If, if you like things being very precise and neat, this is, is going to be a good exercise for you. Look, there's already black ink on the olive leaf. This is going to be a good exercise for you because you get to see me make a big mess. Um, no, just kidding. Because this will help you realize that you can nature journal without being perfectly precise. And that's really useful in the field because... A lot of times when you're in the field, nature journaling, things happen. A bird might poop on your nature journal page. Uh, literally could happen. Or uh, maybe you're you're in a weird position because you're in nature and, um, you know, a mosquito bites you and then you, you, you mess up and you make this, oh, shoot, look, I just made that line on my paper. Well, practicing nature journaling in a way or drawing in a way that is a little bit harder to control, like what I'm about to do right now, is going to help you um, kind of just loosen up about about that. So I'm going to set this up. Um, if any of you are drawing at home, you could practice um, drawing the, the orchid leaf in this posi position. I have some other prompts, like I have this um, all these jasmine flowers that I picked outside. Oh, I forgot about that, Eve. Eve is mentioning the time that we did this. Um, that was the last uh, time that a nature journal, I, I did a, led a nature journaling group, uh, nature journal club outdoors together in person. All right, so I'm gonna hold this ink, just dip, dip it straight in there. I already carved these sticks. Um, I'm gonna peel off the excess here. And I think I'm gonna draw from the same perspective that you're looking at and um, from the, the camera's perspective. So I'm gonna, that means that I have these edges um, or a frame around it. This is exactly when I was um, like when I was a kid, I would have I would have hated this drawing tool because I was all about like control. And I remember trying charcoal. I think I would go to um, you know a bookstore or an art store with my parents and I just want to buy stuff. Um, I'd be like, yeah, charcoal, yeah, um, watercolor. And then I would get home and I would be like, oh my God, I can't control this, this media. Um, and then I would just basically give up on it. And I was also really, really uh, resistant to like formal art training uh, when I was a kid. And I would just want to do my own thing. And um, if I had been a little bit more like okay, I'll I'll try this. Um, I will I will actually listen to this person, or I will experiment with this this medium. Um, I probably would have learned a lot faster. And this is exactly the kind of thing that I would have been like. It probably would have made me scared and I, or, or something, and that's why I would avoid it. And then we we often come up with all these stories of why we don't use certain media. Like, oh, I just I just don't like watercolor or, oh, I, I just, you know, that's not my style. Um, sometimes we actually are being true and sometimes it's actually our brain trying to avoid something that is challenging and it, that, that might be exactly what we need to learn or grow. So I'm doing a little bit of mixture of a line drawing with sort of a value drawing. So you can see... I am, these are, this is sort of that margin of that, that lower part of the leaf over here. Um, and maybe I should put some more lines in there to kind of get like a mid value. 
And value is one of those art terms that you should definitely know. I think John Muir Laws has a video about how color gets all the credit and value does all the work. So the difference between light areas, like right here, and dark areas, like right here, is more important even than color. And a lot of times we sacrifice those value relationships when we try to get the colors right, but it's actually the value relationships that are more important than the color. And notice that I use the word relationships because everything you see visually is a relationship. It's not like this is black and this is white. They're black and white in relationship to each other. And um, that's what is really important. And especially like with watercolor, you need to know that because you can't get anything on your paper as bright as a sun or as bright as the sunset or the clouds reflecting light from the sun. So what you need to do is make everything darker, relatively dark, darker. So everything is relative um, when it comes to art and color. So this drawing is coming out really terrible. Um, if I just look at it sort of by itself and don't think about it as a practice. So this is a good time to practice metacognition and meta emotion. I could just get really upset. I'm gonna to switch to the face camera so I can make like an upset um, face. <sighs> I could just tell myself, I suck at art. This is terrible. Or I'm never gonna do ink again. Drawing with sticks is a dumb idea. But that might not be really true to the reality. The reality might be Maybe this subject is hard. Maybe the way that I'm showing it is hard. It's not something that like, so here's something, for example, that it's like, can you tell what this is? Can you tell what that is? Yes, it's a tree. Well, that's because it's really easy to show a tree. But to show an orchid that has kind of weird light on it and the orchid is also not completely in the frame, that's challenging. So now is a time to practice metacognition and not throw the baby out with the bathwater or blame the wrong, uh, the wrong thing. This is not your fault. Um, this is not my fault. There's certain things that like, that's why if I were teaching this, um, in the field and I just wanted everybody to feel good, I would probably say, okay, we're going to use this technique. We're going to draw with twigs and we're going to draw trees. We're going to draw dead trees. And if we draw dead trees, um, this style, um, this media is going to be very, very easy to, to capture dead trees with. Look, there's a dead tree right there. No problem. So that is an important lesson in meta whoa cognition because um that's supposed to be a c right there because you could easily blame yourself and have all these other outcomes um and uh and 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 attribute the this drawing in the wrong way but that's not, that's not what we're here for. Okay, so I'm kind of over that orchid. I'm going to move that orchid, and I'm going to do a leaf. Um, this is another important thing. Um, I'm going to write down this word. This was, like, my favorite word. I'm not into tattoos. I mean, maybe I would be into tattoos in, like, another uh, lifetime. I think I was in another dimension. I'm actually a tattoo artist. Um, but I haven't. I don't have any tattoos. Big reveal. Um, but... For a while, I, I, I would have tattooed this word onto, um, onto my forehead, probably, or maybe onto the back of my hand. Iteration. This is such a great word. Look, you can write with a stick, too. Iteration. I love this word. That's supposed to be a heart, by the way. So this is what a journal is all about. And I would show you how I can just turn the pages right now, but this ink is still a little bit wet and I don't have my blow dryer right here. So iteration means that you can, tr you can try something in your nature journal and if it doesn't work out and you're not happy about it, you can just go and move on. Don't get caught up in the fact that like, I am not going to take this personally. This orchid leaf drawing right here, I'm going to frame it even more because it's it's so terrible. 
Um, this this should not ruin my session. This one drawing, it's the first drawing in the session. I have drawn today. I have done some nature journaling and drawing already today. Um, this should not ruin your session. Don't let that ruin your session. You're experimenting with a new material. Um, just keep going. So I'm going to look over at the comments because it looks like some new people have joined. And I just want to show some love to the people um, in the comments section without like constantly being distracted by it. Yay. It looks like Drew is here. Drew Rosales is here. Um, Drew is the one that hooked me up with like a really cool connection and gave me like a personal tour at the Cabrillo National Monument um, where I got to see a lot of really cool um, flowers and native plants and cool bugs like bees too. It looks like he has a, a, a one of those sweat bees in his um, little icon there. Um, good to see you, Drew. Tess is here too. Tess is in Australia. Um, glad to see you here, Tess. Um, and of course, Ivea and Nature Sketches are here as well. Um, if you're also here, if it looks like there's more than 14 people watching, um, and you're not posting in the comments, go ahead and post something in the comment if you want to, to um, ask any questions. So I'm going to switch here to this leaf. Um, maybe this subject. So remember, subject matter is going to affect your outcome. And if you think it's just you and you just blame yourself all the time, and don't take into consideration, oh, maybe that was a difficult subject, um, then you might have, you know, a lot more doubt or self-criticism than is what, what is really um, needed. But the main thing, remember, that's, and, and also just go back to what your, your actual intention was. So was my intention to make a beautiful page? My intention was to experiment with this technique um, and to, to loosen up because drawing with a stick is um, an intentional way to experiment with a, a technique that forces me to loosen up. Some people are loose already, and maybe they don't need this technique. But if you're sort of really into sort of precise drawings, and you're sort of a perfectionist, and you're usually using graphite, and you use your eraser even more than you use your pencil, then this might be a good technique for you to at least experiment with, or if you want to experiment with mark making. Um, so here is an example of mark making. And I'm just going to, maybe I can zoom in a little bit there. But see how this line turned double right there? It's thicker there. It sort of, it left off there completely. See how it dried out and left off there? That's called line variation. Line, ooh, I'm getting line variation in the word line line variation and that's something I'm usually really bad at because I'm usually drawing with a tool like this. This doesn't give you line variation. This gives you line consistency. Look at that. Or I'm drawing with a tool like this. This is especially what I, you know, the kind of stuff that I used to draw, draw with all the time. Look at that. It's just completely the same. Now I usually draw with a tool like this, which gives me a little bit more line variation. See, because I can get really fine and fat. I love that. Look at that, that's line variation, but it's controlled line variation. Whereas when you're drawing with a stick, that's not very controlled. So if you're the kind of person that is, and this is where the metacognition comes in again, is you have to be able to diagnose yourself and think like, okay, well, I have noticed I do draw with graphite all the time. They're really pale drawings. Um, I erase all the time. I'm really worried about what it looks like. And um, I really like these microns, like zero, three, or like even smaller tips. If you draw with a really sharp tool or a really fine tool, that is a potential indicator that you're a perfectionist and doing experimenting with drawing with charcoal or sort of like these dip pins or sticks is probably a really good practice for you. And then when you reflect on like, okay, my intention right now is to lo loosen up and to experiment with line variation, then you're giving yourself permission to experiment. Um, this drawing is about, and you might have to say it even out loud to yourself or write it down, that this page is all about um, experimenting with line variation and 
worst case scenario, you could rip this page out of your nature journal. Some people, this is, this is a controversial topic. Some people might say, do not rip, do not rip any pages out of your nature journal. Some people burn whole journals. Um, don't recommend that. But, um, if you give yourself permission and you think about it in this with this word right here, iteration, you can always flip the page. I'm going to see if I can make a, a drawing of flipping pages. There's multiple pages in your nature journal and you can flip them and start over. That's, that's one of the benefits of nature journaling compared to like doing a painting or whatever. Okay, I'm going to check out the comments. It looks like a ton of people are posting new stuff. Yay, a lot of people are here. I see SB um, on YouTube, watching here on YouTube. Um, Gabrielle, Gabrielle and G. Um, I hear you, Gabrielle and G. Um, I always get frustrated when I mess up my drawing. Okay, that's, that's the first step. So you're doing this already, metacognition. You're noticing, you're, you're aware of your own process. So the next step is how can you get past that? Um, that frustration can end up being the thing that keeps you from doing more drawings and doing more drawings is actually what's going to make you better. So figuring out how to give yourself permission to mess up. Maybe you can make a page or three pages or a whole sketchbook and you can just say, okay, this sketchbook is for messing up. That's the whole point of this sketchbook or that's the whole point of this page. I'm literally just going to mess up on this whole page. I am going to mess up on this whole page and I'm just going to loosen up and once I'm done with this page, I can move on. And if you get that out of your system, I think on your next page, you'll do a lot better. Um, really great, thanks for sh sharing that. Um, yay, Loretta is, is tuning in. Thanks Loretta, Loretta is, a big fan and is always tuning into the Nature Journal show and posting lots of comments. Thank you, Loretta. And Margaret's here too. Margaret's in Baja, California. Welcome, Margaret. Margaret's going to join in on the bug drawing class. We're going to make it happen, Margaret. I think Eva is going to be there too. That is coming up soon. The bug drawing class with Stephanie Dole. All right, I'm going to do a couple more drawings here. I think I'm going to do um, just kind of loosen up. Sometimes it's good to just get your hand moving enough. Um, this is a much more complicated subject, but I'm just going to play with it. It smells really good. I wish you could smell this as well. Um, and I'm just going to fill the bottom of this page, and then I'm going to get my my hair dryer um, and just dry this all out. So maybe Ivea could post something in the comments about the concept of pencil miles because that's what I'm going to try to do right now is just fill the rest of this page and just get my hand moving. There's something about quantity that is really important. And it sounds so weird to say quantity over quality because usually we think, oh, quality is so important. But a lot of times, paradoxically with drawing, the quantity is to focus on quantity is very liberating. Ivea, in fact, leads a whole group that is called Pencil Miles. So if you want to focus on that and be in a group that is super, just really focused on just being, just accepting everybody wherever you're at, it's amazing how how that, that, that feeling is lacking in our society. But Ivea's group is a great place to experience that. And then that can transform into your art and your nature journaling. Just feeling a little bit more accepted and just not being so hard on yourself. So I'm just really trying to focus on like, okay, I'm just gonna fill this page Focus on quantity, mark making. This is the water soluble, so I wouldn't wanna um wouldn't wanna do 
I probably wouldn't want to do watercolor over this because it'll bleed the black ink everywhere. So if you feel like your lines are like this, consistent, always the same, that you need more line variation, try breaking off a stick. These are olive sticks that I picked in my backyard. And if you want to work on a little bit of line variation or just loosening up, try this technique. Anyone can do it. This bottle of ink is going to last me for months. Um, that could be a pencil miles challenge, ink miles challenge. How fast can you use up this Sumi bottle of ink? I'm still looking for how many milliliters it is. It's two ounces of ink. Why is it in ounces? Two ounces of ink. How long will it take you to use two ounces of ink? And this was less than four bucks. And the stick was free. So nature journaling doesn't need to be an expensive habit. Um, okay, so I'm just kind of, yeah, just get those lines down. Nothing fancy. The nature journal show is all about doing empowering you. So I do live shows, I do interviews, I do how to's. If you've seen the channel before, they're not all lives. I have how to's like how to nature journal at the beach. And I talk about like what kind of sunscreen, how to deal with um, sunglasses, how to use binoculars and sunglasses at the same time, how to draw standing up, you know, what chairs are best for drawing. I talk about different materials. I review a lot of different art supplies and I interview people from a lot of different walks of life um, on the Nature Journal show. So that's one of the things that I'm talking about today. And you can see the link down here um, for my Patreon. That's pretty much the only way that I monetize this and I get paid for this because this is what I'm doing full time now is I'm teaching Nature Journaling. I do get to teach kids, which is really awesome. And I do get to teach um, adult um, people in person. And so I do make some money off of that. But the main way that the Nature Journal show continues is through the Patreon. And if you sign up to the Patreon, if you just uh, type this in right now, then you'll get to see that um, Patreon patrons, it's basically like a membership platform. And some people are paying $1 a month um, or $5 a month. You know, it's like a coffee less than a coffee a month. And um, that is um, supporting this show and making it possible for me to continue doing this without advertisements. I haven't used advertisements yet. Um, and I want to just keep making better and better shows to help you um, get more out of your nature journaling and help um, spread nature journaling to more people. So instead of actually getting my um, blow dry right now, I'm just going to uh, use my... Uh, paper towel here. I've already had a few ink accidents today and um, this is a good time to talk about another term that I really appreciate and that is fault tolerance. So look at how I just kind of intentionally just smudge this paper here. So this is a term that I'm going to write out on the next page. Um, actually no, I'll write it out. Yeah, I'll write it on the next page. Fault tolerance. This comes from engineering mostly I think um, but the idea is um, fault tolerance. So certain machines um, are so picky, they're so precise, they're so um, finicky is, is another word that's sort of like the opposite of fault tolerance. So we don't want to be finicky in our nature journaling. Um, and I know for me, a lot of times my art and my style would be very finicky, it would be very pale. Um, but this is what we want to aim for is fault tolerance. And what that means is if you're nature journaling um, at the beach at low tide, for example. So I'm going to switch for drama. Whoops. For drama, I'm going to switch to the face camera. We've got the biggest low tides of the year coming up really soon. And if you go nature journaling at a low tide at the beach and there's like, you're drawing this like really precise starfish and you're, you're nature journaling the starfish and you're using like really fine micron 
or, or some kind of really fine pin and you, and you make this perfect drawing, then suddenly you step on a sea anemone and the sea anemone squirts water that comes onto your, onto your nature journal. Oh no, my sea, my uh, sea star drawing is totally messed up because a few droplets of sea water landed on your paper. That is finicky. What you want is fault tolerance. So if you can develop a nature journaling style that is more fault tolerant, what that means is if you make a few mistakes, if something gets a little bit smudged, if a sea anemone squirts salt water onto your page, it won't ruin your page. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because I think fault tolerance is super important. So like on this previous page, I just smudged it up and you know, hopefully your drawings will be able to withstand a little bit of that and still show the information that you need to show. Another example would be from when I was nature journaling um, in a burn zone recently. Uh, let me go to that. Here's, here's another one. This was all done with uh, dip pins. Um, this was all done with sticks. I drew this with sticks that came from this old tree. And this is an upcoming episode of the Nature Journal Show. Um, let's see, Nature Journaling Fire. Where is it? You can see I'm doing a lot of experiments in my nature journal, experimenting with styles right now. This is, if you can guess who, oops, if you can guess who, what artist I am getting ideas from right here, um, I will give you a prize. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't see that. Post in the comments who you think, what artist you think I'm being inspired by right here. And that's something I'm going to talk about in a minute is how to get ideas from other artists. Yay, Terry is on here, and it sounds like Terry wants to know how to join Pencil Miles. Great. I'm gonna post this up here. Um, oh, it looks like it looks like Eva is working on posting the link. Um, So I'm going to show you what I mean by fault tolerant style. Okay, here I was nature journaling during an actual fire. During a prescribed burn in Plumas County, Plumas County experienced some intense wildfires last year, um, some of the biggest wildfires ever in California, and I was up there, still smells, it. it's still smells like smoke on this paper um, because we were nature journaling me and Lori Wiggum if you don't know about Lori Wiggum she's an amazing urban sketching teacher she does nature journaling she's basically the one that has inspired me about drawing with twigs but we were both nature journaling during this live prescribed burn so there's actual fire happening and we had to keep moving and you know you can't sit down you can't pull out all of your art supplies it's like this and then there's like there's like um, smoke in the air. You can't sit in an easy position. You can't get all all of your supplies out in an easy way. Um, and then also sometimes you get charcoal on your hand. So drawing in a fault tolerant style, um, nature drawing in a fault tolerant style is really important. And for me, a fault tolerant style looks like bold lines. It looks like bold lines. Um, oftentimes it looks like separating my text into one color and my drawings into another color. Um, here's another example. I had a huge ink spill on my page and tried to just keep going with it. Where's that other page from? Uh, I guess that was before this trip. Or is that in the last, that, that might have been the last page of my old sketchbook. A fault tolerant style just means you're not really going to mess your page up if you get a little bit of a smudge mark or a little bit of a thumbprint. It's not going to mess your page up. So here are some recommendations for um, fault tolerance. So first of all, I recommend sort of like a brush pin. So this brush pin makes pretty big lines. 
See how 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 that line is big. I can make I, I can make fine lines too. Um, and it's but see how this is 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 showing up quite easily. Now this is probably not fault tolerant. Look if I were drawing with this pencil. Notice how much paler this is. Um, it takes a lot more time to build up value. Like if I want to get something dark, I have to work on it quite a bit um, to get it dark. Um, and even if the it, with the words, you know, like if if I'm saying, um, what if this is a like a um, California buckwheat flower buck wheat flower. Notice how pale that is. Now then, if something happens, like um, some water spills on it or it gets smudged, it, that might not show up that well. But look at this over here. See how this is just immediately in the first stroke, I'm capturing I'm capturing the information. What if it's like a Canada goose? Um, it's a Canada goose. I can quickly capture um, that information um, with, with like a fairly minimal amount of lines. And if water spills on it, watch this, I'm going to be crazy here. And spill some of my water from my, um, like, it's like actually not, oh no, water. It, it was still a little bit water soluble, but like, I still have the information there. Um, I can still with the gray side of the pin, um, right in Canada goose. So that is a little bit more of a fault tolerant style. If I'm in the tide pools, if it's a rainy day, and yes, on the Nature Journal show, you can see episodes um, where I Nature Journal on rainy days. That fault tolerant style is going to allow you to Nature Journal more. And nature journaling more, guess what that equals? Pencil miles. Or pin miles, or pin kilometers, paint kilometers, whatever you want to call it. And guess what that equals? That equals more fun. More connection with nature. More nature. And more learning. Okay, I need to work on my handwriting, yes. And guess what that equals? Better art. So if if you can do this and you can put in more time, your your art's gonna get better your your art is gonna eventually get better. But if, if you focus too much on making your art perfect at the beginning, that's the, the recipe for disaster. Okay, I'm going to do a page flip right now, and this is this is sort of like the last thing I'm gonna do um, for, for this special bonus episode of the Nature Journal Show. I am going to do a little bit of a page flip. And um, for those of you who are just turtling, turning in, turtling in, I am Marley Pfeiffer, and this is the Nature Journal Show. I make episodes about nature journaling at least once a week, usually twice a week, and sometimes thrice a week. And I make shows that are live, and I make shows that are pre-filmed, Nature Journaling Adventures, so you can vicariously join me at the low tides in California, or vicariously experience nature journaling during an actual fire, a prescribed fire, and also live shows where I interview science illustrators um, conservationists and all kinds of people and beginner nature journalers. And I also do episodes where I review um, supplies and interview people who are just getting started with nature journaling to help you with tips, tricks, and techniques to make more out of your nature journaling. So if you're just tuning in, um, that's who I am. And this is the nature journal show. And there's only a few more days, like five more days before you can sign up on the Patreon down below to get a Patreon membership to help support the Nature Journal Show because I am doing this full time. I do teach nature journaling full time. I do some in person, but to help this show keep going and to make it better, I'm, you know, I'm going to keep doing this no matter what. But your support uh, makes it will make it even better. And for even like ten dollars a year, you can support on the Patreon because this annual membership is only going to last until May fifth. 
there's probably like half the people or more who are watching the show right now are already patrons. So all of you already know about it, but for everybody else, definitely consider joining. Um, if you follow this in link below, you can find out more and you can join in the patron parties and all of this extra stuff. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a share of my last nature journal. I usually do this at the end of um, whenever I finish a nature journal, like fill one of these up. And I don't know if you can see, um, but back there I have about 40, I think I'm almost at 40 right now, nature journals just like this um, that I have filled. Um, nature journaling mostly in California, but also in Tanzania. I've, I have nature journal in Ecuador, um, nature journal, going to be nature journaling in the Galapagos next year, uh, nature journaling in Costa Rica, uh, nature journaling in British Columbia, uh, nature journaling in the um, Southwest, the Grand Canyon, uh, rafting for multiple days. Um, where else? I think I'm forgetting somewhere, but nature journaling all over the world. Um, and every time I fill a book, I try to share it on um, on here for all of you to see and to learn from because I think we can learn a lot from seeing others' pages and it's always fun, um, especially seeing um, all of the mistakes that other people make that maybe you look up to um, and admire. So I'm gonna do a quick page flip right now. So I hope you're ready for this page flip. I'm gonna switch back to the document camera. Maybe this will give you some inspiration Maybe it will make you less intimidated. Um, and I do have videos where I talk about like techniques for when you look at other people's nature journal pages, how to um, steal ideas and not get intimidated um, or not get, the main goal is to make sure that you keep um, filling pages. Oh my gosh, Tess is inviting me to Australia. Yes, yes, please, I would like to. I would like to come nature journal Australia. Oh, Tess, thank you so much. And I love this also from Ivea. Absolutely, Ivea. So this is a really important point that Ivea is making. Um, what Ivea is saying is that, you know, your nature journal, and, and this is a problem with social media. So if you go on Facebook and you see, like, the ones that get the most likes are these like beautiful pages. Um, and it's obviously it's, you know, deciding which of our pages are the most beautiful, but it is, is problematic. But like actually this journal, a lot of these wouldn't rank really high on social media, but um, sometimes the more polished pages like rank really high on social media and people like them a lot. But that doesn't mean that that was the nature journaling experience where you learned the most, had the most fun. And um, so what Ivea is saying is that maybe those pages with the smudge marks or like the blood or the like raindrops or the dirt, like that was actually the really cool story. That was the time you had the most fun nature journaling and you like witnessed something amazing in nature. It doesn't necessarily equate to like the most polished illustration. So that is a really important thing to distinguish. And that's why we started this whole Fearless Friday thing on Fridays, it's supposed to be on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page, all about posting the pages where like you had the most fun, you learned a lot, you had a great experience, but it's not necessarily the most polished page. And this is super inspiring for beginners because nature journaling is not being not about being like the person who can make the most beautiful illustrations. Every single person who nature journals can make genuine unique and potentially the first ever observations in nature of a certain phenomenon. And so your observations are 100% valid, whether you are nature journaling for the first time or you've, you're nature journaling for the hundredth time. And so Fearless Fridays is all about that because it's really important for us to understand that there's a difference between uh, beautiful polished illustrations and having a good nature journaling experience. So on that note, this is sort of an example of something that has sort of an, an emotional quality to it that is really important to include in nature journaling. And some of you have probably seen this episode of the Nature Journal Show where I went and nature journaled where I grew up. 
Um, and this episode is called Nature Journaling, Where You Grew Up. And where I grew up was in San Diego, California, Southern California. And this Tecolote Canyon was the closest nature place to where I lived. I did a whole episode of the Nature Journal show where I went there. And I went there and I hadn't been there in years, in decades. And I went back there and I nature journaled. Now, look, you can see there's issues here. Look, look, even there's like, this is tr showing you a little bit of a fault tolerant style is that my lettering is fault tolerant enough that I can have this frame here around the T and it's slightly distracting, but doesn't take away from it completely. And I incorporate words numbers and images into this page but this was nature journaling where i grew up and so this was where i grew up so there's a lot of emotional content in here because that's something that you should record in your nature journal as well you are a part of nature whether you like it or not and this idea that we can separate ourselves from our observations is false um even in the most like most physical science as possible, the observer has an effect on the observation. So here I have some more pages where I was like nature journaling and finding cool stuff underneath this telephone pole. Um, and these pages, these pages don't even have any color or anything like this. These probably would not rank very high on social media, but to me, these are really important because this is going back to where I grew up as a kid and connected to nature as a kid and going back there now with a nature journaling perspective and seeing more and reconnecting to that spot where I first uh, fell in love with nature as a kid. That's super important. So if I posted this on social media and it got three likes, that is not a judgment of the quality of this experience. The quality of this experience is what I felt and how this nature journaling felt to me, not how many likes I got on social media. This was a page, um, I think um, um, Andrew Rosales isn't here anymore, but this was the, the page I did at the Cabrillo National Monument. You can see in my metadata right here. This is a collection and I did make a video about this on the Nature Journal show not that long ago because a collection is a super important nature journaling technique to know about. Um, and it, all it is is look at this. I mean, even if you're really new, you can do this. A collection is basically when you decide, okay, I'm going to do flowers. I'm at this one place. I have 20 minutes. Let's see what these um, six flowers are. Nature journal them. Basic drawings. Look at that. I mean, that flower is not, that's not a special drawing. I have the leaf. Look at this one. That's super simple. A little bit of words. That's all you need to do for collection. Another thing, I'm going to do a whole episode about this. I've been calling this marginalia. I think that word is what they use in uh, illustrated, what are they called? Illustrated manuscripts. So like those old Bibles where they have these margins with all these crazy drawings and plants and animals and stuff. It's the marginalia. So while I'm nature journaling a collection, if there's other things happening, like if you saw this video, this insect literally shed its, its um, it, there was this flying bug land, while I was doing this, while I was drawing this stuff, um, uh, while I was drawing this stuff, a bug landed on my paper and while it was on my paper, it like lost its wings and then it started walking away after it shed four, four wings two sets of wings, two pairs of wings. And that was really cool. If I were just focused on my flower and I was like, okay, I'm not going to write anything about that bug, that would have lost that. But I used my marginalia to record it. Here's another example of a collection, but with mushrooms. Um, and here are a little bit more mushrooms in that collection. I nature journaled my feet wearing flip-flops. Here is just some experimentation. Oh, I was like reading about how bird wings work. Um, oh, yay. Drew is still here. Oh, and Sally are already dropping their leaves. Drew is the expert. If you're in San Diego and you need to visit Cabrillo National Monument, um, Andrew Rosales is, uh, works over there and is the expert. Um, to check in with. He really hooked it up for me with a like little personal tour. 
I did a little bit of nature journaling from a book, and this is something I'm going to talk about more in future episodes. But um, I was super, I've been super curious about aerodynamics and hydrodynamics and how bird wings work and how um, fish fins work. Um, so um, I was looking at a book, this really cool book, and sort of nature journaling ideas off of it. This might be more sort of in the sketch noting um, category. Here you can see this is more about the hydrodynamics, which was really interesting. Here's a coelacanth drawing that I copied from Ray Troll. And I'm going to leave it at this page right here for a moment. Um, since this is a live show, um, biology is um, calling, and I need to take a trip to the bathroom. I'm going to leave it at this page and see if you can find anything interesting on this page to have any questions about. Um, I do want to do a future video about this spectrum here. So while I'm going to the bathroom and I mute it here, um, post any questions in the comments if you have any questions or noticing anything interesting on this page. All right, that is literally the first time that I did a bio break during a live. Uh, if you've seen before, you know how committed I am to this show because I did a five hour long live show several months ago. <laughs> and for five hours, I didn't, I think I ate a couple snacks. I might have eaten a brownie. But um, during that time, I did a whole show um, nonstop, basically talking for five hours. Um, as I organized my nature journals and showed you ways to um, organize your nature journals. All right, so this is an, an idea for a nature journal episode I want to do in the future. And this is a spectrum. So this is, I talk about spectrums a lot. Um, I think it's spectra is the plural. But um, this is about awareness or attention. So spotlight versus lantern. Spotlight is a very focused beam of light that is looking at a very specific thing and staying very focused. So for example, with this nature journal collection when I was at Cabrillo National Monument, um, it would have been very focused, it would have been very spotlight on end of the spectrum if I just only focused on these flowers and didn't pay attention to that bug. Now lantern awareness, a lantern shines light all over the place. It just goes everywhere. So the, the lantern awareness would be is if I totally shifted gears and started nature journaling this bug and sort of left behind these flowers. So this is a spectrum, and I did this with these kids that I was working with, and I asked them, where do you land on the spectrum? And this is metacognition again. Where are you? Are you more on the spotlight end, or are you more on the lantern end? Does your light shine everywhere and you kind of can't control where it shines or is your light very focused and is this something you can adjust yes it is something you can adjust so this is something i want you to think about this like a um on the radio or maybe there's an example on your phone where there's the volume and you can um the volume or the saturation or whatever and you can manipulate the slider where do you want that slider to be Here's the slider right here. Where do you want it to be? You can move that along here as long as you're aware about it. And um, if you're aware of it, there's certain times when the lantern is going to be more useful and the spotlight is going to be more useful. 
Um, Ivea is asking about the um, fish jaws. I was, I think, Ivea, I think that um, during this time I was looking at the, um, um, I think this is the Dunkleostis. It's one of these um, fossil fish. And um, these are also some fossilized fish. And they're mostly from Ray Troll, Ray Troll books, even though you can't. I did see fossils of these in the museum, in a museum in Chicago, the Field Museum in Chicago. Um, but they're really cool. And um, this is when they had a, like, um, I think their whole face was like bony, but one of the one of the ancient fishes I I can't even remember from the pre, from the Cambrian or or something like that. Okay, moving onwards. This was a page that I nature journaled with kids. Um, here was more stuff that I was reading about in that book that talked about like animal movement and stuff like that. It talked about hydrodynamics. So I was looking at all of these fish tails. More of that. Sometimes it's good to nature journal from books. I'm going to do an episode about that in the future. This was, if you saw that, you might recognize this, um, might recognize this drawing. This was from the episode, How to Nature Journal Charismatic Old Trees. Um, I did this painting of this old oak tree, some close-up stuff. <laughs> like you can see here, I still haven't added in, I, I, I left a space for adding in this information and um, text, but didn't, because I think it's, it's this is supposed to be like Quercus, Quercus kelagai, sort of a different approach. You can see here, this is more about the mark making. This was a live show, nature journaling from the window. And this was on a rainy day. You can actually see little bits of where the rain affected the ink. See in this ink right here, there's these little like pale spots. Um, that messed up the writing, but it's fault tolerant enough of a style that it didn't get totally devastated by a little bit of drizzle falling on the page. So I was nature journaling this from the window. I think that's called how to nature journal from your window. That was fun. Then the next day I was teaching kids at the coast and we did a string safari. So this is something from John Muir Laws where you use a string and you put it around a, a given area. And we actually did it at low tide in Nature Journal, like the barnacles and weird animals growing in there. Um, really great technique. Um, if you don't have this book already, I highly recommend getting it. Um, obviously, our our hero, our friend, our guru, our teacher, John Muir Laws and Emily Legren, and of course, Amy Tan, uh, if you didn't know, she is you know super famous novelist and has um, become uh, you know gotten really into nature journaling too. But this book right here, um, it's worth buying. But you can also, if you um, don't have a bunch of money right now, you I mean if you don't have thirty bucks to spend on this right now, um, you can get this whole thing as um, a free PDF online. But if you want the printed out one, it's cheaper. To, have, to actually buy it um, than to try to print it out yourself at like Kinko's or whatever. This book is great and I used used it, um, I've used it and helped Jack develop some of the, the curriculum and testing things out such as a string safari. String safari is super fun. So here's an example of that at the Tide Pools. Um, this is still that. This is nature journaling from my window again. If you can nature journal from a window, it's, it's really useful. Um, here I'm nature journaling like the clouds and the snow level. Let's see if I can make it through all of these. I have to eat some more. I have to eat some more chocolate. Oh, this is the nature journal family. So this is the online class that I teach for families. Um, nature journaling, looking at some leaves, doing a curiosity challenge. That was really fun. Nature journaling from a kayak. <laughs> This was on Super Bowl Sunday. You might have seen this episode of the Nature Journal Show. Most of these pages are from episodes of the Nature Journal Show. 
um, not the first one I did nature journaling on kayak, but this is all I got on this trip. So I did a whole long trip. I think that's it. I did a whole long trip on kayak. I made a whole video about it with JP and sometimes you might not get a lot done and trying to be okay with yourself. February 7th, nine, uh, I almost said 1921, 2021. This was all I got in that nature journaling session, multiple hours. That's fine. Later I came home, nature journal this plant. I didn't finish down here and I'm not worrying about it. I, I need to write in pinguicula. Okay, maybe I'll do it now. Sometimes I block in the letters like this. If you block in the letters, it helps, especially when you're doing italics, bubble letters. Italics and bubbles? That's hard. So blocking it in first will make it way easier. Ping, quick, quick. Really cool genus, Mexican butterworts, carnivorous plants that you can grow at home. Pinguicula. I don't know the species name off the top of my head. I think it's marginata. I'll just write that. If you're nature journaling, practice doing italics. Practice your lettering. Um, and practice italics because if you're doing species names, ooh, oh, good thing I did that. See, that needs to be lowercase and that needs to be capital. It might be the marginata. Anyways, um, sometimes I use this, um, Tombow brush pin, um, right here. And with that brush pin, I can kind of put in things that I want to fill in text later. I didn't do it yet on this one. Sometimes you create homework for yourself and you never do it. Here's another page. Uh, nature journaling some cool plants at the uh, nursery I used to work at. This is a really cool uh, bell flower from the Canary Islands that makes an edible fruit. I did not make a nature journal show episode about that. This was the nature journal family teaching um, homeschool families nature journaling. Super fun, super fun. Here's a collection. I just mentioned that earlier. This was nature journaling at night in the tide pools. That was so crazy. And there is a video about this. If you haven't seen it already, you should definitely check it out. That was an episode of the Nature Journal Show. It was super windy, at least 17 mile per hour. It was 48 degrees Fahrenheit. It was nighttime and I was nature journaling in the intertidal zone. There were waves crashing, but it was just super cool. Here is experimenting with this pin. Um, you've probably seen me review this pin. I found out about it when I interviewed Maria Ermalova Tirada, um, who nature journals in um, multiple languages, including Russian, English, and Japanese. And she told me about this pin. Um, here are some experiments I did because I want you to know. I think this was on a live show. I want all to show all of you more. Um, more materials, more tools, and what works and what doesn't work for nature journaling. This was also on a live show. I think I did this whole thing on a live show. This was a class that I taught with kids. Here's more about, this is more like blind contour drawing. I notice. I wonder, it reminds me of. More uh, nature journal family online class. I'm not going to be doing it next month. Here's more. That was such a fun class. We drew this bird wing. Where is that bird wing? Uh, it's somewhere nearby. This was a collection. Um, all of this stuff was my preparation for that class. Families learned about trophic levels, nutrient cycling. Here's another collection. These are all bones. So a collection is a nature journaling strategy. It's a basic nature journaling strategy, and I have a whole video about it on the Nature Journal Show. If you're just tuning in, if you are just tuning in, if you are just tuning in, 
I am Marley Pfeiffer, and this is the Nature Journal Show. And you have a few more days if you want to be a part of this community and help support this show. There's only a few more days for you to sign up on Patreon for a whole wait over here for a whole year, and that can mean as little as one dollar a month. And that is the main support that allows me to continue doing this. Also, you will get access to patron-only parties. I usually do like, I think I do like six a year. These patron parties on Zoom, we get together, I hear what's going on for you, what your nature journaling challenges are, where your growth edges are. We talk about what future episodes of the Nature Journal Show are gonna be like. It's really great. Half the people who are watching right now are already patrons, but if you're not already, check it out here. You can sign up, you can see, um, all of the special stuff that I post there just for patrons and for as little as a dollar a month or $5 a month, you can sign up. And for a year, you can get two months off if you sign up between now and May 5th. So without further ado, let's get back into this Nature Journal share because the Nature Journal show is all about empowering you, sharing fun nature journaling stuff with you. I was teaching nature journaling to these kids um, because I also do teach in-person stuff besides just the show. And um, while we were there, someone pointed out that they saw an owl. And so look at this. This is an old redwood tree that's hollowed out. This is one of the kids I was teaching right here. And it turned out that up here in this hole, there was a teeny little owl. I think it was a, a Western screech owl. And this is all I could draw of it. So sometimes what you actually see in real life is going to be when you try to draw it, it might not look like uh, immediately identifiable as what you want it to be, but that's normal and that's fine. And that mean that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to draw those things. That was really cool and it doesn't look exactly like an owl there, even though I was looking at it through my binoculars, um, I still tried to draw it. It would have been easy for me to just say, oh, I can't do that or to draw this and then get frustrated and rip this page out but that's part of the story and it's important. Underneath it, you could write, it doesn't look like a real owl, but that's what I actually saw in real life. That's where words come in. Here's more experimentation with this pen. Um, by the way, this, this end right here is really good for cleaning your ear if you need that. Um, food I dim on in, it was quite a nice uh, fountain pen for this. But I've been having issues refilling it. I see Margaret is asking a question. Good question, Margaret. It really depends. So the family ones are always um, just two hours, but these live shows can go on forever. So I've done a five hour one. I'm just going, you can leave at any time. There will be a recording of this. I'm really grateful that you were able to join in. Um, there will be a recording of this later. I'm probably gonna just go um, until I'm passing out from hyperglycemia and need to eat dinner. Um, so you can, um, you know, check back in whenever it will be uh, recorded on my YouTube channel. Here's a page where I was talking about uh, connections and how to nature journal relationships. And this was for the nature journal family, which is the online class that I taught for kids. And it was super cool on one of those days with the Nature Journal family, even though it was on Zoom, teaching kids on Zoom is not easy. But if you have a live alligator lizard, it really helps. Um, I caught this alligator lizard outside and we practiced nature journaling that. You can see practicing a fault tolerant style means that even if you get some smudges, uh, the page still works. This was really fun. This was also related to the alligator lizard. We were practicing asking questions super important this was that one again because um, I was doing multiple sessions that was really fun um, and this was a um, color test was this the one that I did with Ray Bonto maybe you've seen this episode I did with Ray Bonto we were doing color tests um, and I would put out different objects in front of the document camera and then everybody who was watching would have to try to guess those colors and uh, match those colors with their uh, watercolors. More experiments with the Fude de Manin. That's this pin right here. I'll put it, put a link to it in the description. 
um, and drawing alligator lizards and calla lilies. Those were some of my major subjects. Um, here you can see the food I demoed in, and I think I ran out of ink and got kind of frustrated with refilling it. But this pen, it's a fountain pen, but it's possible to get this really fine line and it's possible to get a really thick line. So it's quite impressive in that way. I like that you can put down so much ink. Um, I've been testing it. I've done a review of it, but um, it's a little bit hard to refill in the field. And the cartridges that it comes with are um, not water soluble. So you can't um, do watercolor over them. It's a little bit messy. Um, I'm gonna do more of an in-depth review of it later. This is the converter. Um, and the converter, um, the converter doesn't really uh, make it very, it doesn't hold very much ink. And so I run out of that ink really quickly, uh, which is unfortunate. But with the converter, you can use the waterproof ink. And that's what this, this ink is right here. But that's what I did use for this drawing. More Fude de Manin. Going back to the expression mark making, you can see this drawing is very much about mark making. More experimentation with mark making. It's good to do this every once in a while in your nature journal. I usually don't let myself do this, but um, experimenting and kind of just messing around with mark making is really important. On the other end of the spectrum, being very precise and using numbers and measurements. This was also during the nature journal family. We did a change over time. I observed how a um, potato grew over the course of a month. It was very interesting. It was part of my class. Here's some experimentation just with different symbols. So this is something really useful. If you haven't done this already, I highly recommend um, looking up any books about sketch noting. Or visual vocabulary. What is your visual vocabulary? Even if you're just nature journaling, it's important to have symbols. So like, what does this symbol mean right here? Maybe this symbol means time. What does this symbol mean right here? Maybe this is something that surprises you. What about this symbol right here? Or this symbol right here? These are all symbols you can use in your nature journal and just practicing like, okay, oh, boxes like this. Oh, I'll, I'll use arrows like this. Just practicing drawing the symbols is gonna really help your nature journaling because all of these this visual vocabulary, you can use this in your nature journaling. Oh yeah, this was a fun trip. Nature journaling low tide. This was an episode of the Nature Journal Show. Maybe you saw this one already. And I talk about how to use white, opaque white. Oh yeah, that's right. We do watercolor. So what that means is we usually have to start with our lightest values and reserve those, such as this white here but you can also cheat and put white down, opaque white on top of your darker watercolors. There's not a ton of options. In this video, I talk about how unsexy most of those options are. These are probably some of your best bets right here. The Uniball Signo and the Presto Jumbo Correction Pin. You can use gouache too. Um, I talk about it in this video. I think this is called Nature Journal Adventure Low Tide. You're welcome, Loretta. Thanks for joining in. Um, here's some more. I've been doing this a little bit more. I used to, uh, you know, I went through a stage where I didn't do this for a while, but doing these sort of these tests and see these are abbreviations for my different um, colors in my watercolor palette and just practicing color matching. More of that. Uh, one of these was with Ivea. That was the trauma informed nature journaling workshop. This was a cool butterfly. I got a nature journal. Haha, -ha, this was an, a live episode where I practiced nature journaling the sound of different birds and, and how to study and improve your birding um, using nature journaling. These are sort of species profiles. 
little bit more experimentation here. This is water soluble ink with watercolor on top. So like if I use this food aid demo in and then paint watercolor over it, how bad is that really? Okay. So that's what I experimented with. And then I use some gouache. This is acrylic wash. I usually don't use it, but this acrylic wash is an opaque color that you can paint on top of ink. Um, sometimes it has applications in nature journaling. It's a little bit messy and hard to use in the field. I did not do this in the field. This is also coconut craft. We do not have these in Northern California. It's the biggest uh, terrestrial arthropod in the world. Would love to nature journal them in real life. My secret language. This is learning from Paul Gauguin. Are there artists that you like? Are there artists... Um, even if they're not nature journalers that you do things that you want to incorporate into your nature journaling, you can study those, um, those artists. Um, some of my favorites are like Bill Watterson. Um, I've also been studying Winslow Homer recently. How can you look at these pages and steal ideas? Like what are aspects of this painting? Um, what can I take from this and apply to my nature journaling? What, what can I learn from this artist and apply to my nature journaling? What can I steal from this artist and apply to my nature journaling? Um, Bill Watterson, yes. Calvin and Hobbes, oh, that's so goofy. Well, what are there actually things in here? Look at this vegetation. Look at how Bill Watterson draws this tree right here. And that forest. See that forest coming over the snow? Are there aspects of that that I can apply to my nature journaling? Are there aspects of this narrative um, information sharing that I can apply to nature journaling? 100%. Yes. Who are the artists that you like and how can you steal ideas from them and apply them to your nature journaling? Experiment a little bit in your nature journaling. This is nature journaling that burn area um, that I just talked about. This video just came out. Um, if you go to the nature journal show, um, on my YouTube channel, you will see this video just came out recently. And I got a nature journal of these plants that came up less than a year after this big fire, the glass fire burned through Annadale State Park. And I got a nature journal out there. And that's it for this book. I still need to fill in the index. I do have a video all about how to do an index. Um, and I can't believe it, but I think it's like a little bit past dinner time. And um, I have not eaten dinner yet. So just wanted to come in here tonight, do an extra live show, tell you a little bit, if you don't already know about the Nature Journal show, just tell you a little bit about that and tell you about my, about my Patreon. Because even for um, $1 a month, $5 a month, um, you can support the Nature Journal show and these videos that I make. Because right now, that's basically the only way that I'm monetizing this channel. And so your support, I'm going to keep doing it anyways, no matter what. I'm going to keep doing this every week. But your support will make the episodes even better. Help me maybe you know buy a little bit better equipment. Um, spend a little bit more time on it. Um, things like that. And make the show even better. So... Up until May 5th, you can sign up for a whole year. So that might only mean $10. That might only mean $20 or $30 for a full year. And then you'll have access to the Patreon parties. And you'll just have the pride in knowing that you are one of the people making this show possible. If you haven't seen the endings of, of a lot of the shows, um, I do a roll call of all the people who support the channel. I think there's over like 30 right now. Ivea is a supporter. Um, a whole bunch of people who are tuning in and commenting in the chat are supporters of the channel. So thank you all so much. Um, the Nature Journal show is basically like my life right now. If I could do um, only one thing, I would make Nature Journal show episodes like this live like the adventures that I do where I take you along um, so you can vicariously experience. We've got some big low tides coming up this week, so you know I'm going to be taking you out there, nature journaling in the low tides, and a whole bunch more um, stuff coming up. So check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Marley Pfeiffer. You can see um, what is available for patrons on there. There's parties. You get a comment on um, you know what I should make my next video about, all of that. But I care so much about all of you who've been tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, 
There's going to be more cool interviews coming soon, but I just wanted to make this um, special episode for all of you and to share a little bit about my Patreon. All right. Well, I hope you have a great night and um, hopefully that inspired you to go do some nature journaling on your own, experiment with mark making, um, check out my Patreon, um, and most of all, just keep your pencil miles going, keep filling those pages, and keep paying attention in nature. All right, everybody. Bye.